Proverbs chapter 8, and let's just pause for a moment and pray, and uh, then we'll go into the scriptures. Our Father, we're thankful for our opportunity of being able to gather together today, and as it were, put our feet under your table, and look to you with expectant hearts, Lord, that you would speak to us, and yea, even that you would feed us from the word of God. Lord, like Job, we want to say that we have esteemed the words of thy mouth more than our necessary food. And as our Lord said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So we look to you today, Father, that you would speak to us and that you would feed us uh, from the scriptures today. So, Father, we pray now that you'd uh, help us, that we would understand what we read and help us to apply these truths to our hearts and to our lives. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to speak to you this morning in Proverbs chapter 8 on the subject that Christ is the wisdom of Proverbs. Now we're going to not read the first couple of verses, the first 21 verses. These are truths that I'll make reference to, but we have looked at uh, in one way or another as we've looked through the book of Proverbs thus far. But as we read through the book of Proverbs, we can see that there is a definite call to uh, hear uh, from wisdom. And we see that wisdom wants to be known, wants to be heard, wants to change lives. As we read in the book of Proverbs, we see that there is a plea uh, from wisdom that we would stop and that we would listen to what wisdom has to say, and we read of this in the first couple of verses of Proverbs 8. Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of high places, by the way in the places of the paths. And this is something that is repeated throughout uh, the book of Proverbs, that there's this call uh, to stop and to take heed to what wisdom has to say to us. Remember in chapter 1 and verse 20, we read there that wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse. So wisdom is, is trying to get our attention. And generally speaking, we see wisdom personified in the female gender. In fact, we, we see that in, Acts, in uh, Proverbs chapter 8 this morning, in the first part. But what we want to focus our attention as we look at from verse 22 this morning, as to how we see very clearly that Christ is the personification of wisdom in the book of Proverbs. <coughs> and there is this emphasis that we would just get wisdom. In Proverbs chapter 4 verse 5, get wisdom, get understanding. In verse 6, forsake her not, she shall preserve thee, love her, she shall keep thee. In verse 7, wisdom's a principal thing. Get wisdom, with all thy getting, get understanding. And we've seen that wisdom cries out, and wisdom will keep us from personal ruin. Wisdom will keep us from financial ruin, and wisdom will keep us from spiritual ruin. And we've seen this emphasized just these last couple of chapters in the book of Proverbs. Wisdom, we see, is personified. We read of wisdom's power in verse 14 and 15 and 16. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me kings reign and princes decree justice. By me princes rule and nobles even, all the judges of the earth. We see there's great power in wisdom. And we also see wisdom's offer in verse 17. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. We read of wisdom's wealth in verse 18. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. And we read of wisdom's grace in verse 20. And 21, I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the path of judgment that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance and I will fill their treasures. Can you see this morning that wisdom is crying out and wisdom wants to get your attention and wisdom is saying, I want to bless you. I don't want to take away from your life. 
I want to add to your life. I want to bless you. And I want you to take heart and take heed to what I have to tell you this morning. So wisdom is calling for us just to stop and listen. Now, as I've said to you before, if we read the book of Proverbs and we come across that oft-repeated phrase or word, wisdom, and not that we want to change the Bible, but when you read wisdom, if you understand Christ, Christ is the wisdom of God, the book of Proverbs really comes alive. Because Christ is the wisdom of Proverbs. Indeed, He is the wisdom of God. And we read of this in the New Testament. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 24, the Bible says, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. And in verse 30 of the same chapter, But of Him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom. So Christ is the wisdom of the Word of God. And in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 3, the Bible says, speaking of Christ now, it says in Him, or in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and of knowledge. Everything that we have, everything that we see, that we can touch and that we can handle, everything that's in existence today, is there because of wisdom. Wisdom brought it into being. And so this morning I want to share with you two things. Uh, as we read from verse 22 uh, about wisdom, we'll speak about how wisdom is eternal, and we'll see as to how the Word of God speaks about how that wisdom can therefore be trusted. So let's firstly consider from verse 22. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. And when there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was, I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world, when he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth. Then I was by him as one brought up with him. I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. Rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth, and my delights were with the sons of men. Now therefore hearken unto me, O you children, for blessed are they that keep his way, my ways. Hear instruction, and be wise, and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoso findeth me findeth life, and shall obtain favour of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul, and all they that hate me love death. So Christ, the wisdom of Proverbs. So first I want you to notice that he is from everlasting. He's from everlasting. Solomon, as he continues writing for us, he takes us back to eternity past. If there's such a thing, we... we, we, we use words with a time frame because that's what we understand. But he takes us back to an eternity past, before there was time, beyond time, beyond space. The Holy Spirit of God, if you like, pulls back the curtain so that we can see wisdom abiding in the Godhead. And we can see wisdom actively participating, yea, creating all that we have round about us. And so we see in the, the Word of God as He brings it, wisdom to our fore and to our attention, it helps us to see that we can see the fingerprint, we can trace the hand of wisdom in all that is round about me. So we read in verse 22, He says, The Lord possessed me in the beginning of His way before His works of old. 
Now, I'd like you to notice, he says that the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way. The word beginning there is used for our benefit. It gives to us a, a time frame, uh, if you like. We shouldn't think of it in terms of that this is where he had a beginning because he is God. He has no beginning. But we don't understand these things and so there's a, a time stamp placed here in the Word of God so that we can understand something. We don't, you know, we, we, we speak about eternal, we speak about everlasting, but I think that we really struggle to comprehend these concepts. You know, it's, it's difficult enough, isn't it, to think to, in terms of, I will live forever. You know, we, each one of us today, we will live forever. There was a time when you were not. But when you were brought into existence, you were made an eternal soul. And you will live forever. You'll either live for heaven, forever in that wonderful heaven that God has created for you. You'll either be in heaven enjoying eternal life. Or you will one day be cast into hell and endure eternal torment and damnation. But understand this, you are going to live forever. That's quite a sobering thing, isn't it? Where will I spend eternity? That's the question of the ages. You will spend eternity somewhere. So we can understand maybe to some degree that we had a beginning. But to try and wrap our minds around the fact that we will never have an end. Well, that is something that is that's quite difficult. When we've been there 10,000 years, well, we won't be operating in the realm of time in that sense. So, we're, it's life eternal. So that's difficult, isn't it? But when you think in terms of um, an eternal, like I said, it, there's no real such thing like this, but an eternal past. From eternity past. Now that's difficult, isn't it? Because there never was a time when God was not. It's his very nature to exist. So when the Bible says that the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, it's giving to us a, a time frame so that we can understand it. Jesus Christ always was. Before Abraham was. Remember he said, Abraham rejoiced to see my day and was glad. And they said, you know, you're older than our father Abraham. You're not, you're not even 30 years old yet. Or 50 years old yet. And uh, he said, before Abraham was, I am. He is the self-existent one who seeks to reveal himself. So we have this, uh, in the beginning, it helps us to give a, a bit of a time frame. But when you think of this phrase, in the beginning... Doesn't it cast your mind back to Genesis chapter 1? Because that's where we're able to, that's our time stamp, if you like, that we can understand when in the beginning, when God created the heaven and the earth. That's something that we can get our minds around. Well, so we read that before that, Christ always was, because in the beginning, you know, Christ didn't have a beginning, but he was the one that spoke this world into being. Because the Bible says that without him was not anything made that was made. So when you think about our creator God, in our mind's eye, we often think in terms of God the Father. The Bible is very clear that God the Son is the one that created and contains this world. We also see the Holy Spirit you know, moving upon the face of the water so we can see the Godhead three working in the great work of creation. But the beginning is a reference uh, to help us to understand. And it's a reference to the creative work of our Lord and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. So the works of wisdom are quite evident when we think about creation. And it's a wonderful thing when you think in terms of creation from the most intricate detail to something that is as vast as a mountain. It speaks about the dust on the top of the hills. As far as God's concerned, that's what it is. In fact, it's all dust, isn't it? It's all dust. 
So ladies, we shouldn't be too concerned when you see a bit of dust around the house because God, God made it all. You should rejoice. Look at this. I live in a house that has got the hand of God in it. I can see dust. <laughs> so the, the works of wisdom are, are evident. We can see it in God's wonderful creation. And, and we can see it in, in, in details that are so important when you think about the precise placement of the sun and the moon. <coughs> and the stars and the exact uh, speed that the world turns in when you think about the wonders of the mind and of the body and the marvel of creation as a whole all of these things uh, leave us no doubt as to the work of a divine architect these are all wonderful things and they're all attributed to our Lord and our Saviour so the personification here is not just the, the female personification that we see elsewhere in Proverbs. It's talking about Jesus Christ. And in verse 23, he says, I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, wherever the earth was. Now, some people get bent out of shape when they see the word set up. But the word set up means to be anointed. Jesus Christ is the anointed of God. He's the Messiah. He is the Christ. He is the anointed one. And so from the beginning of time, this is always so. He was always the anointed one. He was always going to be the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. When Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of, of Eden, let me tell you, God wasn't wringing his hands together saying, what shall I do now? God knew before he ever formed Adam out of the dust of the earth that God the Son would come into this world and would be our sin sacrifice he was from the beginning he was set up he was anointed that's what the word set up means it means anointed he was the Lamb of God that would come into this world so that he could provide an eternal salvation when we think of our Lord Jesus Christ we need to be so mindful of the fact that it's talking uh, about the fact that he is indeed the anointed of God. And this has always been the case. In Micah, the Bible says that he's from everlasting to everlasting, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. In Revelation chapter 1, we read that Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the first and the last. And in chapter 21, again, I'm the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. So the personification of wisdom here is very clearly talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. And then I'd like you to notice, if you would, in verse 23, and I'd like you to notice the words when and the words before and the words while in verses uh, 23. So he says, I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, wherever the earth was, when there was no depths, I was brought forth. And when there were no fountains abounding with water, can we just go to my, my text here? Before, in verse 25, the fountains, the mountains were settled. Before the hills was, I brought forth. While, in verse 26, as yet he had not made the earth nor the fields. So the words when, the words before, and the words while, all those words speak about a pre-existence in performance. So let's just look at those verses quickly. Verse 24, it talks about the, the when, verse 24, talks about when the depths of the oceans were measured. Wisdom decided just how deep the oceans would be. Wisdom decided how much water the oceans would contain. Now, the climate change advocates, and, and in a couple of years' time, there's going to be something different. But they're going to tell you that the oceans are rising. That it's not going to be long before you have a beachfront property in Oldham, something like that. You know, it's not, the water's going to rise. Well, that's going to be good news if you're living in Oldham. But, but the fact of the matter is, the Bible doesn't tell us that, does it? The Bible doesn't say that. No, no, the Bible tells us that he set the decree. 
These are, these are things that are immovable. God has decreed how much water there's going to be in the, in the oceans. In Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 29 tells us that wisdom gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment. And in Job chapter 38 and verse 11, the Bible says, Hitherto thou shalt come, and no further, and here shall thy proud waves be stayed. These are ironclad principles that cannot be changed. That God says, this is how it's going to be. Now, I think we should be you know, wise when we live on this planet, and we need to use our resources carefully, but I don't believe the nonsense that they are sprouting about the climate change and how our oceans are going to rise. And, you know, you know, this is all nonsense. God has said it. These are ironclad principles. This is how far the waves are going to be. And God says no further. That's as far as it's going to come. And then in verse 25, he speaks about, in verse 26, before the dust was made. You see, wisdom didn't just measure the depths of the sea but wisdom measured the height of the highest mountains. Wisdom tells us that he made every particle of dust. And in verse 27 and 28, again we see the word wow, and we speak about uh, the designs that were manifested. He says, when, the, when he prepared the heavens. Uh, in verse 28, when he established the clouds. So these are interesting words. Prepared. And established. That talks about God having a plan and God having a purpose. There is a wonderful designer and it's the wisdom of God. It's the Lord Jesus Christ who has this plan and this purpose. So you think about a building before a building, you know, before they ever break ground, before they ever throw concrete. There is a designer that sketched out, drew out exactly how the building would be made and what it's going to look like. And before God ever formed this earth, before he ever spoke it into being, there is this wonderful designer. He planned and he purposed it. And the finished product, if you like, is what we have round about us. But wisdom preceded the work. So, I want to bring this to your attention, just I want to emphasize this because we need to recognize that there never was a time when Jesus Christ was not. He is the eternal Son of God. He always was and He always will be. There are some people that will tell you, in fact the Jehovah Witnesses, they'll actually take you to these verses and they'll take you to that word beginning there and say, you see, that it talks about that the Lord possessed me. You're saying that Christ is the wisdom of Proverbs. That talks about how that, they'll tell you, how that this is where Christ had his beginning. Listen, you can't argue theology with a lost person. It's like talking sense to a drunk man. You cannot do it. All, our responsibility is just to preach the word of God. To tell them how they can get saved. But to try and explain theology to someone whose intent on disbelieving it, why are you just but wasting your time? Very clearly, Christ is the wisdom of God, and he always was. We take the whole Bible and we can see that Christ is from everlasting. And because he's from everlasting, I'd like you to notice that there is an enduring trust that we can have. Look at verse 32 again, if you would. Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoso findeth me findeth life and shall obtain favour of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. The first part of what we've looked at today reminds us of his eternal being. And because he is from everlasting, I want you to see this morning that because of that, we're able to have this wonderful, enduring trust in him. That's why he calls us, wisdom calls to us to hearken. 
Wisdom calls upon us to hear. So, verse 32, we, we have this word, therefore. Now, remember I tell you, when you come across the word, therefore, in the Bible, you find out what therefore is therefore. It's taken us back to the verses prior. Taken us to the preceding verses. The, the preceding verses are talking about the fact that He is eternal. Therefore, because of this wonderful truth that He is the eternal Son of God, because He is God, because of this wonderful truth, he tells us that we're to hearken. So we're to be listening to him. He says, Therefore hearken unto me, O you children, blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise. So wisdom, Christ, he's calling upon us to hearken, to listen. Now how often when you read in the Gospels of the Lord Jesus Christ and you hear how he would speak to the individual and speak to the crowd. There was always the matter that if they would just but listen to him. And then we go to the book of Revelation and the message to the seven churches. He that hath an ear to hear. And so there is this cry to listen, to hearken to what wisdom has to say. You see, the thing is, is that nobody can go wrong if they would follow wisdom in their life. When you think as to what we've looked at in the past few chapters, where it has to do with, you know, our personal lives, our work ethic, our personal lives concerning our finances, our personal life concerning our relationships, we're not going to go wrong by following wisdom. And let me tell you something this morning, you'll never go wrong by following the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll never find a person at the end of their life say to you, oh, I wish I'd never listened to the preaching of the Word of God. I, I wish I'd never gone in the way of righteousness. I wish I'd never followed Jesus. Never you'll hear that. Never. The, the voice of one who has followed Jesus will always be one of, of happiness and joy that they followed and trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ. But the one who lived a life of sin and wantonness, well, there's always regret. If, if only I'd, I'd pay heed. If only I'd listen. But of course it's then too, too late. So wisdom, our Lord Jesus Christ, he cries out and he's, he's calling upon us. If we would just but listen. And we need to listen. Because there's so much in this world that is vying for our attention. This world is crying out for you to listen. But we need to listen to what Christ has to say. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. So we need to listen. And then the, the, verse 34, I'd like you to notice that we need to be looking, or we need to be seeking <clears throat> Verse 34 says, Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. So we're not just listening. Wisdom is crying out for us to take heed, to listen. But wisdom is saying, you need to be looking to me. Look to me. This is what Jesus is, is calling out for us to do. And this morning I want to urge you, you need to look to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you would be saved today, it would be by looking to the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember the book of Numbers? <coughs> when those fiery serpents went amongst the people and bit the people and the people died. Then God said to Moses that he was to take this brazen serpent and put it upon a pole. And then he was to set it up that everyone that would look at the pole. Just by looking, their look would cause them to live. And Jesus Christ is the serpent that was lifted up in the wilderness. If we would just but look to him with the eyes of faith, not just listen to what he has to say, but look to him, we'll find salvation to our souls. 
And notice in verse 35, he speaks about the life. He says, For whoso findeth me wisdom, whoso findeth me Christ, findeth life, and shall obtain favour of the Lord. We find our lives saved now and saved for all eternity if we but find the Lord Jesus Christ. If you find me, if we have Christ, then we have life and favour of the Lord. You know, when so many people are working for God's favour, the only way that we can get God's favour is in Christ. We have acceptance with God if we have Him. But then lastly, and we kind of end with a warning, verse 36 is a warning. There's a liability because it says, He that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. And all they that hate me love death. You see, if a person says, well, I won't look, and I won't listen, and I won't accept this life, Jesus says, if you hate me, you're wronging against your own soul. You know, people think like this, and it's the strangest thing. People think that God is an unloving God because he casts people into hell. You know, God has done absolutely everything so that people don't have to be cast into hell. He, he's, he's done the greatest thing by giving his own darling son to die upon the cross so that we don't have to go to that awful place called hell. That's what Christ has done for us. And wisdom cries out. Wisdom calls out to us and says, if you hate me, then you're going to love death. If you hate me, you're going to hate life. And death is the only alternative. People go to hell because of their flat out refusal to come face to face with the Lord Jesus Christ and trust Him and trust Him alone for salvation. So Christ is the, is the wisdom of God. And in the book of Proverbs, here, like nowhere else, we see this wisdom personified in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we've seen, uh, again, taking wisdom back to the, the, the way that it's personified as a wisdom, as, as a woman. We've seen a woman crying out in chapters 5, 6, and 7 on the corner of the street. Crying out, trying to get women, men's attention to go in the way of wickedness and sinfulness. Many people have harked in that way and gone down to the footsteps, and gone down to that place called hell. But then on the other hand, we have wisdom crying out in the high places, in the chief places of concourse. Wisdom crying out, look to me, listen to me, trust in me, and you'll find salvation to your soul. So who will you look to today? Will you listen to what the world has to offer or will you listen to what Christ has to offer? Will you go the way that leadeth to an eternal death, an eternal punishment or the way that leads to eternal life and eternal bliss? That can only be found in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he's from everlasting, because he's the wisdom of God, we can have an eternal and enduring trust as we place our faith and trust in Him. So may the Lord encourage us today. If you don't know Jesus as your Saviour, why don't you come to Him today? Trust on Him to save your soul. Trust on Him to uh, make you a new creature as you believe on Him. If you're saved today, if you know that you're on your way to heaven, be rejoicing in the Lord Jesus Christ and all that He's done for you. Let us pray. Father, we are thankful for our time together. We thank the Lord for what we are, are able to read and be reminded of in the Word of God. We're thankful for our Saviour, the Lord Jesus.